You know, uh, the Bible teaches us that if we're quiet, even the rocks will cry out. And I think that's happening this morning with the feedback on the mics. <laughs> they were enjoying the microphones when we're enjoying Todd's song so well that they decided to sing right along with him. Um, turn in your Bibles, please, to the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. While you're, uh, while you're looking there, while you're opening to that scripture, I just wanted to mention, I don't know whether uh, all of you have heard or not, but um, I guess it was, it must have been Thursday night that Rick and Kay Warren's youngest son, Matthew, uh, committed suicide after a long, uh, difficult time with mental illness. And um, so in my opening prayer this morning, I'll be praying uh, for them, those of you that might not know, Rick Warren is the pastor at Saddleback uh, Community Church uh, in Mission Bay Area. So, um, anyway, I have met him several times, uh, he and Kay several times when they were at the university and at his church at different seminars I attended. Just really, they're really down to earth people. So um, I think we should remember them this morning. Also, um, we're going to have uh, the Lord's Supper today, and after that, as we leave, uh, we will have the deacons will be at each door with an um, offering plate for the deacons' offering that we use for the needy. So if you would please be prepared. Uh, to uh, give to that fund uh, this morning. I probably will mention it again, but uh, Ben asked me to say something about that right after right after communion, and I have a good memory, but it's short. So since I'm thinking of it right now, I'm going to say something about it right now. Isaiah chapter 6. Verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, and with two they covered his face, and with two they covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is still with his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, there's no way to describe you. There's no way, no words uh, that I can say, no words even in your own word the Bible or adequately man can put into words how awesome you are, O oh God. As we look into this new series, Lord, uh, knowing God, we just pray and hope that somehow our hearts and minds might be open to what you would teach us directly. That you would touch each one of us and make us understand the incredible nature, your incredible nature, Lord God. And on this day when many of us are filled with sorrow after, after Matthew took his own life, Lord, we just pray for the family that remains. We pray, pray for Rick and Kay and that extended family, Lord. It's a very difficult time that they have to be going through. That you would touch their lives and comfort them. Knowing that this terrible disease causes people to make this decisions which are harmful to themselves. We have only the hope and the assurance of God that someday we will and you will see him again. 
before the throne of grace. We ask now that your Holy Spirit would fill our hearts, fill our lives, that we might be more like you through the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's been a long week for me. I'm supposed to be retired. And instead, I think this week I'm just tired. So, uh, however, that doesn't mean I won't yell at everybody this morning or, or be excited or emotional. That, that will come, I know. This week, uh, we're starting a new series, uh, a new series on knowing God. And as I prayed about what, where we would go after Easter, we've been talking about the incredible love of God and, and how God impacts us through his love and how we need to impact each other by showing that, that same love that God showed to us, that sacrificial love, that love that says, you know, I really don't care who you are or what your stature is or what you've done with your life. Or even how you've sinned against me, I'm going to die for that sin, and I'm going to love you in spite of it. And I think that special kind of sacrificial love is the love that we all need to share one with another. Amen. When you become perfect, then you can stand up and espouse your perfectness in front of the entire world. Just don't try to do it before you become perfect. Because in this modern age of technology, they will find you out. Amen. We've seen the great and many people fall because of things that they've said and things that they've done in their lives. As the Bible all says clearly, surely your sins will find you out. But we have this incredible merciful and loving God that I think uh, as I was praying about and thinking about where we were going to go, that I think we'll spend a few weeks and just talk about the attributes of God. Just so that we might even greater understand the sacrifice uh, that he made for us on the cross. And one of the other things too that was really kind of weighing on me this week is this whole um, take God for granted have an attitude that we seem to have. I mentioned a little bit about it on Wednesday night, but you know, one of the really neat things about getting older is that you can get on a horse and you can ride that horse until you ride it into the ground, you know, and, and uh, Hopefully there's some wisdom in some of that, that that will make a change in people's minds and in their hearts. And one of the things that probably has most disturbed me in the world um, over the years that I've known Jesus as my personal Savior is the, the, how much farther and farther people have gone in using God's name in vain. Amen. The Bible says to us clearly that God is holy. And we're going to talk about that today, the holiness of God. And it says very clearly that we are never, never to use God's name outside of a position of awe and reverence and fear for Him. In fact, in the Old Testament, just saying God's name meant instant death. Amen. It was, his name is so powerful. I was reading the other day and when Moses was uh, at the base of the mountain getting the Ten Commandments for the second time. And God laid out the parameters and had them draw and pound sticks into the ground to keep the crowds back who might want to approach God. And God said, these are the lines. If they step across this line, they're dead. 
Because God is an incredibly loving God, but he's also a God of justice. And as we look at the different attributes of God, we need to remember that. And it wasn't, it wasn't so bad even, I mean, it was bad enough that the world, that the world system, that unregenerate man, that don't even believe in God, would use God's name in vain. But the Christians would start doing it. And it just really bothers me that this whole thing, this whole OMG situation that we find ourselves in where people just use God's name loosely and for everything that happens it is disturbing. Anyway, today we're going to take a look at, at that holiness. I was reading a book not long ago by um, R.C. Sproul, and he says in the book, makes a statement in the book, that the holiness of God, I mean, he says, the Bible says that God is holy, holy, holy. Not that he's just holy, not even holy, holy, but holy, holy, holy. He doesn't say that God is love, love, love. He doesn't say that he's mercy, 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 or grace, 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 or justice, justice, justice. He says, God is holy, holy, holy. And the whole earth is full of his glory. What a powerful statement that is and a, and a real understanding of how important this phrase in the book of Isaiah is. When you think about this picture, this picture of seeing God on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the entire temple. It shows the position and authority of God is so far beyond anything else that is in existence. But what does it mean to be holy, for God to be holy? First of all, it means that God is absolutely separate. Ezekiel 11.22 says, The glory of the God of Israel was high and above them. And in Revelation 15.4 says, Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. 